good afternoon, folks. This is yours truly, Pastor Kevin L.A. Ewing, uh, chiming in with you once again to share some some spiritual nuggets that like have been reiterating over all of my teachings. These teachings are leading us into uh, next month. Next month, December, we're going to have our month of fasting. It's called the end of your fast. And of course, uh, that fast is from the 1st of December to the 31st. You don't have to do the entire month. You could do it if you want to. You could do all of it if you want to. I think I would need this right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, could, you could do the entire month if you want to. As well as you could do two days, three days, four days, seven days, ten days. 14 days, 21 days, 30 days, however you choose to, it is totally up to you. The purpose of this fast is clearing our spiritual slates. The spirit world is the parent world to our material world. In order to amend, to adjust, to alter, to augment anything in this physical world, it has to be achieved from the spiritual world or from a spiritual perspective. So with that knowledge, as the Bible says, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. With that piece of vital information, we are not going to go into the next year doing the same physical things and expecting a different result. No, we're going to challenge the spiritual world through the rules, laws, and principle, in this case, via fasting, okay, to alter things in the spiritual realm, okay, that will by default bring the changes in this physical or material world that we live in, all right? So I wanted to share with you this teaching today on the mystery of consistency. And this is what's going to be required going into next month. Or even if you're fasting now, it doesn't matter. These are still the rules. And a lot of us, many of us, a whole lot of Christians are not consistent. And one of the things that I learned with this word consistency, which I'll define in a little bit, it always produces results. Whether people are aware of it or not, whatever area in life that you are successful in or whatever area in life that you are failing in, it is in this, this main ingredient, this one main ingredient that is producing the failure, that is producing the success, that is producing the frustration, that is producing the anger, and what is that consistency? Kevin, why is it why is it that I'm always meeting the wrong guys? Why is it that I could never achieve so, well whatever it is? I, I can tell you this. You are consistent in the ingredients that you are applying to give you that result. You may not be aware of it, or you may be ignoring it. But there's something that you are consistently doing that's producing that. You're, 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 you're unknowing, committed to it. In some cases, you are aware, but, but you're just accustomed or by habit continuing to do it that particular way, even though you know it's not working, even though you know you're going to get the same end results that you dislike, even though you are fully aware or you've been preempt on this for whatever reason your consistency to do it is always there so consistency let's be clear here will always produce results now it may not be the results you like but it doesn't matter the minute you uh, engage the formula of consistency then whatever it is that you are doing you are going to be successful at it. Let me let that, let me let that, let me just let that resonate there for a second, all right? Whatever it is that you are doing over and over, because that's what's, that is what being constant or consistent, or that's what consistency means. To do something over and over, you're committed to the repetition of the way you think, the way you, whatever you're doing. So at the end of the day, according to the law of consistency, which we will be looking at scripturally today, you are going to get a result. You are going to get a profit. Again, you may not like the result. 
you may not like the prophet. However, due to your consistency, by default, it produces whatever it is that you were consistent with. I try and help you. <laughs> That's all I trying to do. I am trying to help you. So let's look at this word con, uh, consistency, right? Which comes from the word consistent. Okay. So what I did is I decided to go look at the etymology of this word. The etymology or the word etymology means the, the root of where that word came from or where, how it was discovered, right? And I see that it originated from the Latin word. I'm going to spell this word because I don't think I'm going to pronounce it right. And the Latin word to cons constant, okay, is C-O-N-S-I-S-T-E-R-E. -E. This is the Latin word, C-O-N-S-I-S-T-E-R-E. -E. Now listen to what this word, listen to the original rendering and meaning of this Latin word that gave us consistent, uh, constant and consistency. So the, the rendering okay, of this word, listen, it means to come to a halt or come to a stop. Stop whatever it is that you're doing. And now, listen, to come to a halt and remain the same at that place you stop. Remain the same in whatever you're doing. In other words, don't just go jumping from place to place to place. No, no, no. Stop right here. Become focused. And now continue to do whatever it is that you are doing over. And don't do nothing else. Don't be distracted. Don't be none of that. Just stay in this spot, whether it's mentally, emotionally, whatever. And continue Continue to do whatever it is over and over and over and over because the mystery of consistency is that if you're consistent at whatever it is that you're doing, it's going to produce a profit. Now, what do you mean by that, Kevin? Well, let's define profit. And the word profit means to bring an increase. So consistent at what I'm doing, meaning that I'm putting in the work, right? And if I'm consistent at this work, this work will produce a profit, meaning that whatever I'm doing, the result is going to be more. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you here. I try. A lot of people are not consistent, not even just in, in their beliefs in Jesus Christ and so on. They're not consistent. All right. And and one of the, 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 the signs, and we're going to get in a little bit, of being inconsistent, one of the greatest signs is, is frustration. Because even though you're not being consistent, but you're doing it every now and again, you're shocked, amazingly, that you're not getting the results you want, even though you're not doing it all the time, even though you're not consistent. But because you did it once or twice, and you notice everybody else getting their result, but you're not getting it. So you said, how? And, and again, you know, I tell you about this all the time in my counseling. A lot of people come to me with this. Kevin, I have done what you said. And I've been doing it and I get no results. And I mean, it's only left for me to say to them, you're a liar. If you were consistent, that's the key word. If you were consistent, listen, it, it's a mystery. It, it's, it's supernatural that a result must be produced. The formula of consistency have nothing to do with your height, your weight, your education, your emotion, none of it. It is a commitment to continually do the same thing over and over and over and over until you see the result. I'm trying to help you. We're going into next month to fast. Stop doing things. You, you, you stop complaining, man. Stop. Whatever you're going to do, be steadfast, unmovable, consistent. Going into fast next month is going to probably, for some of you, require removing some folks out of your life, We're cutting off that television, putting down that cell phone. Why? Because I want to be consistent in what I'm setting out to do. Whether it's a two-day fast, 10-day fast, the full 31 days of next month, 
whatever. The, the time is, is of no significance unless God tells you otherwise. What is of significance is what I'm setting out to do, again, based on the rules, I want to be consistent at these rules. I don't care who call me. I don't care who trying to, I'm shutting them off. If it's my mother, if it's my father, if it's my siblings, if it's my wife, children, whoever, I've already preempted them. I'm doing this fast. And this here is what I require to be consistent. Now, don't come around me later, but, oh, you ain't talking to me and you ignoring me. No, I told you. I be, we came to an agreement. Now, don't upset me because if I have to seek consistency by leaving this house and go renting a hotel room for the next two days just to, to achieve that consistency, oh, that's going to happen. Why? Because consistency produces a profit. It gives a profit, meaning that whatever I'm consistent at, it will produce more than the work in, in what I'm putting in. Let me give you an example, because I know some of you just looking at the word consistency in the good light. Oh, that's true. You know, if I consistent at studying, yeah. If I consistent at loving my children, if I'm consistent at saving my money. But don't forget, it's a principle. And because it's a principle, it can work for good or bad. So if I'm consistent in a bad attitude, Watch the profit it's going to bring. Because profit means increase. Profit means it's going to produce more. Profit is I uh, my cell phone here. Let's say I bought the cell phone for uh, $1,000, right? I sold it to John for $1,200. I made a profit, meaning I got more for my cell phone than my original cost. My original cost was $1,000. I sold it for twelve. I sold it, sorry, for twelve hundred, and I made a profit, meaning an increase of two hundred dollars. Consistency is the same thing. I'm putting in this work, okay. However, I'm getting more from this work than what I put in. So let's go back to the attitude. I have a horrible attitude, and because of this consistent horrible attitude that I have, watch the profit. Everybody's rejecting me. Nobody wants to be in company with me. Nobody wants to join a no project. Nobody, look at the amount of people through my consistent work of being horrible with my attitude. Look at the profit. Now, again, profit don't mean something good. No, profit simply means an increase. So I have an increase of people that wants nothing to do with me. I have an increase of people who despise me. I have an increase of people who reject me. Why? Because I am consistent with my rotten attitude. Y'all look lost, so y'all know me. I don't say a word unless I didn't do my research with scripture. So let's attach it to scriptural laws, okay? Let's go to scriptural laws. Right, and once we already define this, then we're going to come back to that definition of consistency, okay? But I got to squeeze this in, so let's go here to Proverbs chapter 14. Let's go to Proverbs 14, and we're going to look at verse 23, all right? Because I want to back up everything I just told you, okay? Consistency to be consistent means to be constantly laboring or working at something, whether you are aware of it or not. And in the end, or in the right time, there's a timing for whatever you're doing to produce, to bring forth, uh, it's, it's going to manifest something materially. So listen to Proverbs 14, verse 23. Proverbs 14 and 23 says, in all labor, what is labor? Work. In all labor, there is profit. If you are laboring in your wickedness, it's going to bring profit. If you are laboring in doing something good, it's going to bring profit. If you are laboring and study for in your exams, it's going to bring profit. Profit simply means it's going to bring an increase. It's going to exceed what I put in it. Then what I originally, sorry, put in it in terms of the work. All I have to do, my labor must be consistent. 
I hope you're getting it. I hope you're getting it. You must be consistent. So I don't ever, whatever, whatever is the sum total of your life right now. And I said this to you, I think in my previous video, you could put the blame on your pastor. That's fine to comfort you. You could put it on your wife, husband, children. You could do all of that. Nevertheless, you were consistent in whatever it is that you were doing that you're blaming them for to give you the results that you got. Let me give you an example because your luck lost. Okay. You said that you are sick and tired of your husband. In other words, you are tired of this result you're getting. I'm sick and tired of my husband leaving his clothes all over the bathroom floor whenever he takes them off. Okay? Now, what's your consistency? You complain, 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 complain. Even though you know the results, you know what he's going to do. You know it every day. But you've programmed yourself that I'm going to do the same thing over and over as if my complaining is going to change it. So how do I change what I don't like to see? How do I alter that? Then I have to do something now. You know, something rather than this is who he is. I didn't make notes. Let me just pick these things up and let me let me break the cycle of consistency of programming myself to be upset every time I walk in the bathroom and see his underpants or his trousers or his shirt there. So you're becoming bitter and angry, bitter and angry over something you could change. You told him a hundred times, okay, it didn't work this. So what do I do now? But let me now make some, let me change something in my program and be consistent at that. So I could alleviate this pressure of being angry all the time. In other words, you become a slave to your consistency of complaining, which now grows into anger, frustration. So again, listen to what you say, because this is what we all do. We shift the blame. This man makes me so mad. So he peels Merit off. Really? How, how does he do that? How does he do that? Because I, what I'm looking for here, I'm seeing where he is engaging you to make you upset. But what you're telling me is that what he is doing, okay, and none personal against you. This is his personality. This is who he is. You have made the decision to be upset. That wasn't bad enough. You have made the decision to become consistent in being upset with every time he do it. Now, who's the crazy one here? People hate truth, boy. <laughs> People hate the truth. See, when you when you when you change the perspective on things, and you have to say, okay, that's me. I, I, I'm guilty on this. I'm guilty. Many things we see, we feel it should be to our desire. And even though we cannot get it to our desire, we're going to become consistent in complaining about it. Even though we cannot change it in some cases. Or if we can, we are not going to change it because we have already adopted the lifestyle of being consistent in complaining. Now it says in all labor, there's profit is going to produce more, right? Now look at my consistent, look at your consistent complaining about your spouse leaving their clothes on the bathroom floor. Now let's see, let's, because I'm constantly complaining about it. Okay, Kevin, you said it's going to produce a profit according to Proverbs 14.23. So what is this profit here? I'm angry. I'm frustrated. And I've allowed that incident to mushroom into other things in my relationship with this partner of mine, all stemming from this situation over here. So again, profit means increase. Profit means I'm getting more out of it than what I originally placed in it. So with that understanding, that's understanding, let's go back here to Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14, 23 says, in all labor, in all work, whatever you're being consistent at, you're working, be it emotionally, be it mentally, be it physically, or whatever Lee, you are consistent. If you are not a person who saves your money, every time you get any form of revenue or income, and you are consistent with not saving, then the profit of that you will be uh, or always broke. You will always be a beggar. 
You will always be having to create lies to people to get money from them. So look at the profit. Profit means increase. Look at all of me not disciplining myself and being consistent in saving. Instead, I'm consistent in not saving. So the profit of that is that it's causing so much trouble down the road for me. So you see, consistency is a mystery in the sense that I never thought by me doing this all the time, I was engaging a rule that's producing for me whether I like it or not. I don't like my results. However, I'm consistent in what I'm doing, but I'm never correlating that what I'm doing is what's producing this profit or producing this result. So the idea of this teaching, because that's why I call it the mystery of consistency. Okay, Kevin, I get it now. I get it. I get it. What I get is that it isn't what is produced in terms of what I don't like, rather than complaining about what I don't like, rather than rehashing, reiterating, rehearsing my dislike. Let me do a review of the contents of what I'm consistent at that's producing that result. Am I making sense to you? I'm trying to help you. Okay? So let's let's go here now. Let's go to, to that word, consistent again. So consistent, okay, which is the root word to the word consistency, but the Latin word is C-O-N-S-I-S-T-E-R-E. And it means to come to a halt and remain at that halt, to be steadfast, unmovable, to be steady, and at that point, you keep doing it, whatever it is, over and over and over and over and over again. And miraculously, because it is a miracle, it's it's mysterious. Because you, and when I say it's mysterious, it's mysterious is that you don't know the mechanics and what's going on spiritually through the physical things that you're doing to produce this particular result and making it so uh, much amplified. For example, if I'm consistent at planting seeds, one seed here, one seed there, one seed there, okay? I did the work, right? But the profit of what I did, that one corn, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the little seed of the corn produced an entire stalk with different ears of corn on it. So you see the mystery again? The mystery is in all labor, there is profit. In my labor of planting it, it produced an entire harvest. But I don't know how that happened. And that's the mystery right there. Your constant complaining, your constant murmuring, consistency is literally labor or work. And this is going to produce a very large, watch this, dislike profit. Profit means increase. I hope you hear me. So, the word consistent, which comes from the Latin word consister, C-O-N-S-I-S-T-E-R-E, it means to bring something to a halt and make it repetitious in its behavior. And through that repetition, there's a season. There's a season when it's going to produce. So let's look at the law now. Okay, we just read there is labor, sorry, in all labor, Proverbs 14.23, there is profit. In all my work, and to, to do work means I must be consistent at doing something. I'm working. It's going to produce, uh, sorry, in all labor, it's going to produce a profit. Okay? Now, in that particular equation there, it doesn't give us a date when it's going to be produced. However, if we go here to, uh, here is it. If we go here to, uh, Ecclesiastes 3, Ecclesiastes 3, beginning at verse 1. We now see another set of rules that ties in with the rule of Proverbs 14, 23, the law of labor and profit. Again, the law of labor and profit, and labor here being the consistency of what you're doing, your work, the law of labor and profit is saying that my labor or my consistency in whatever I'm doing is going to produce more in the future than the work or the consistency of work that I'm doing now. Now, in Ecclesiastes 3, is now giving us another rule, principle, all spiritual, 
And it says now, there is a time set aside in the future where the consistency of your labor is going to produce more or profit than what you're putting in right now. They're trying to help you. They're trying to help you. So let's look at it. In, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, to everything, everything like what you mean, my labor, my consistency in what I'm doing, to everything, there is a what? There is a season, okay? And there is a time to every purpose under the heaven. So I don't need to know the specific time. What this scripture is telling me, spiritual rules, is saying, it doesn't matter what time it's going to produce. You know, what should be in your head that, listen, through your consistency, not only will a profit come from this, but there's a time set in the future where the profit of what is happening here is going to be produced. Let me break it down a little bit more for you. Whatever I'm consistent at, simultaneously, unknowing to me, I'm scheduling an appointment in the future of what this consistency will produce. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm taking my time and I'm trying to break this baby down as simple as I possibly could because as usual, I need you to walk away with an understanding, not riddles and rhymes. I need you to understand. Whatever, wherever you are in life right now, whatever you're frustrated about, whatever, listen, let me give you, let me give you more home-based examples. So you go to the doctor and they run a blood test on you. And the doctor says to you, whoa, uh, Brother Paul, <laughs> uh, based on our res the results of your blood test, uh, you have diabetes. Diabetes? What? How, how could that happen? Well, I can tell you, and I'm not a doctor. Whatever you were consistent at, my friend, whatever it is, whether you consume too much sugar, whatever, you couldn't, you never paid attention to your glucose, whatever it is. See, the way life is, nothing just hops on you. Nothing, and this is why you're going to appreciate rules, because rules gives you control. If I watch the videos on how people attain diabetes through unhealthy diets and so on, so if I don't want that, then I must not be consistent at eating fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, chitlins, uh, potato salad at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning and consistent. If I'm consistent, when the doctor says, homeboy, you have diabetes, you should say to him, I, I knew that was going to happen, man. Come, give me a high five. Uh, there you go, doc. Yeah, I was consistent at this. Eating bad and drinking sodas and sweet stuff. Yeah, I, that's, I, in fact, that's all I have. Check, see if ain't nothing else there. So, again, listen to what I'm saying to you. Whatever you're consistent at, the rule says it's going to produce a profit. It's going to produce something more than what you originally placed or put into it. I'm trying to help you. And that's why I'm giving you the rules, because it isn't my opinion. Oh, how I get so big and fat and porky. It's probably my genes. Mm. Maybe, 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 maybe. But whatever you sum it up to be, that's just the surface. Let's go now to the root. And the root will always be consistency in whatever you were doing to achieve or even arrive at wherever you are, right? <clears throat> consistency, okay, is something done in the same way over and repeatedly unchanging. In other words, to achieve this, the consistency, you don't even have to be focused. Let me give you an example. Many of you, all of us know, we have somebody in our family, we have somebody in our arsenal of friends who are who are liars. 
They're liars. They lie, 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 they lie. So they perfect the art of telling untruths, right? So therefore, because they are a professional pathologic chronic uh, liar, they don't have to focus and study when they want to lie to you. It just flows. Why? Because they have been consistent. You, you. Let me let me give you another example. Let me. I'm gonna come back to that. I remember growing up, my grandmother when she used to say, "Let's go study your books or whatever," and she would always use this terminology. She says, "She would say, Kevin, practice make perfect." Now I know a lot of you, old school people. I'm 53, so you all in my age bracket would be aware of that. The younger folks ain't nothing but that. Okay, so they say practice. Practice makes perfect, meaning that you will perfect whatever it is that you're uh, constantly doing. If I'm constantly practicing that. So what she was saying back then is what I'm saying now. She said, practice make perfect. I'm saying whatever you're consistent at, you'll produce an a, a excellent result in the sense that this is the product of what I've been laboring for, whether I'm aware of it or not, whether I like it or not. Okay. I'm not losing you, right? So watch this now. I was going back to, uh, what was my th throwing the thought again? Anyway, I'll come back to the later. So what I'm doing over and over is going to give me that result. Kevin, how is it that every time I always attract men, the only thing they want to do is sleep with me, have sex with me, and the only one I attract are married men. Mm, mm, mm. So let's sit back now. Based on what I've said so far, again, if you're constantly getting a certain result, you're the one laboring. You're the one causing this to be produced. So therefore, I need to do an introspection. I need to do a review. What is it that I'm doing that is causing that? Is it the way that I dress? Is it the way that I, you know, flirt or whatever? Or maybe you don't flirt. Or maybe you do dress modest. What is it about you? You might not even be aware of it. However, it does not negate the law of consistency. So we have to be real with ourselves. Let me stop blaming these men. Let me stop blaming the teacher, the government, the pastor. Let me for once, based on the law of consistency, based on the mystery of consistency, let me look at me. What could I have done? What could I have been engaged in? Well, Kevin, I'm definitely a modest dresser, as you can see. I definitely am a serious woman and I do not flirt. So it cannot be me. I think it's a spirit husband. You think it's a spirit husband. Okay. So you told me that with the hopes that this would change the rules, I assume. Because even if it's a spirit husband, what were you consistent at to get it? <laughs> Talking a mess. <laughs> huh? Life in terms of result is about consistency. Can't evade that. We can't elude that. We can't evict it. It's a matter of consistency. Wherever you're consistent at, some things you're programmed ignorantly that you're consistent at. And you hate the results, but you're committed to the formula that is always giving you that result. Same thing I told you about people who so see it. You so between, okay, if you had to do a, a calculation, Let's say you want to do a calculation. This, and this is going to show you when you are ignorantly consistent to something, ignorantly in the terms and in, in sense that I hate the results I'm getting. I despise it. However, I'm committed to doing what it takes to get that dislike result. So let's say, this is just an example. Let's say, okay, this is 2013, right? Okay, let's say you joined a church in 2010. And you want to do the right things. I'm going to sow my seed, give my tithe, give my offering, special fruit, and do all of that. Okay? So let's just, let's just say, let's just say, we hypothetically speaking here. Let's just say, and because we don't do inventory, we will never know the true amount. So let's say all over, over let's say on average, every year. Okay, so from 2010 to 2023 now, that's a total of 10 years, right? Okay, good. So let's say, between my special offering, 
pastoral offering, first fruit, tithes, uh, and all of those other little uh, uh, conferences that they have where you sow a special seed. Let's just hypothetically say, let's hypothetically say that on average a year, you are shelling out $5,000, okay? Let's just say that. But, I mean, in total seed, offering, giving, and all of that, right? So that's $5,000 a year, all right? Multiply, okay, by 13 years, okay, from 2010 to 2023. That's $65,000, right? Okay, good. Now, you're constantly doing that, okay? However, your results has made you more poor, if that's a word, or no, sorry, you've made you poorer than when, before you started. 13 years later, after sowing $65,000 in all these different seeds, okay, you are more, you are poorer. You are poorer than you were before 2010 when you joined that place. So guess what you do now? Oh, I'm, I'm not interested in going to church no more. All they do is steal your money. Blah. That's, yes, I hear you. I hear you good and well. Again, remember I told you? People always want to shift the blame. They don't see themselves, as I say, co-conspirators of their own demise. They don't see it because they need someone to blame to justify what, what they were consistent at, okay? So watch this. You were following rules, okay, that were designed to keep you poor. Now, you may not have known that, but it doesn't matter what you know. The minute you engage the formula of consistency, it will always produce more than what you put in. So I wasn't as poor, I wasn't poor. I mean, I wasn't doing well back in 2010, but I am super poor now, meaning that I owe over $300,000 on a home that was taken from me because I couldn't make the payments. However, the bank took you to court for you to pay the balance, okay? You lost your car, you're still renting, and not even renting, you're living with a family member in some efficiency where you have to, Pay them every month. But you were in a worse position. But watch, you were consistent in not doing what the scriptures give you in terms of rules to become wealthy, to become well off. So through your consistency of following other people's rules, the work that you were putting in in your consistency produced more in poverty than what you started out originally. Let's go back to Proverbs 14 verse 23. In all labor, in all consistency of work, there is profit. You got, profit simply means you're getting more than what you originally put in. So when you look at your figure, my God, $65,000 I invested over 13 years. And I am in the minus. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. You're right. You ain't right. <laughs> That's the way you're right. So again, and I know I reiterate this, but I, for a reason, this is why whenever you come to this channel, whenever you come to watch me, whenever I come on, what is the consistency in what I do? The rules, the laws, the principles. Because I understand the law of consistency, then I need to train you and not just being consistent, but being consistent in the right rules to produce the promise that was made to us. I can't come in and say, listen, I know what the rules say, but I'm telling you right now, give to me whatever it is. Give it to me and keep giving to me and watch God. You should say to me, homeboy, oh I'm glad I was listening to you because it is you that taught me this. You said to be consistent in the right rules if it is my desire to get the promise, ED, past tense, results. Meaning that the, resu the, the promise results are already intact. But for me to achieve it, I'm not going to get it because 
I jump around and scream and shout. I'm not going to get it because a prophecy was made to me. I'm not going to get it because I could somersault, swing on the chandelier, do the crip walk foolishness. It's going to come because I was adamant and consistent in following the right rules. I'm trying to help you. I am trying to help you. So, my next point. So Kev, where where I, I, I'm getting this, but take me a little bit deeper. Where does consistency start? I mean, how do I how do I train myself to I mean to, to do it, to get it? I'm glad you ask. So one of the principles in terms of being consistent, I think it's the chief one. Consistency is is establish where from the heart h e a r t of course heart is interchangeable with a person's soul their mind their will meaning that if i haven't made the decision or by default the decision was in made from my heart it is impossible for me to be consistent why well i i i i put up a post just before I came online, and it was to preempt this teaching. And the post that I placed on my personal page on Facebook, it says, the reality of whatever it is that you believe will always be displayed in your behavior. Why? Because true belief, or if I truly believe in something like I say, it will always produce consistent results. So, Let's break this down. Let's bring this baby home. Okay? I'm trying to help you here. If I say to Deidre, my wife, and I say to her, Deidre, I love you, right? And she say, Kevin, you truly believe you love me? Of course I, I love you, man. What I, I love, listen, I love you. You're the best thing since sliced bread. I love you more than hogs love slop. I love you. Okay. And Kevin, you believe that? If, what you mean? Every day I curse her out, I am mean to her, I tell her, you pay your portion of the bills in the house, I don't open the car door for her, I don't take her for dinner, everything when it comes to money, I ask her, where's your portion, where's your part of it, I don't respect her, I, 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 I say bad things to her, is that consistent? Is my behavior consistent with my claim of my belief of loving her? And you would say no. Hence, my belief, true belief, which comes from the heart, will be consistent in my action. I'm trying to help you, man. I'm trying to help you. I'm helping somebody right now, you know. Some dude telling you, baby, I love you. I love, listen, you don't know how much I love you. Listen, I, I love the dirt you walk on. You are my oxygen, sweetie. Mm, that's beautiful. Now, based on what you're learning, you should sit back and your focus should be on their actions. Because true belief, if you truly believe what you're saying, by default, due to your belief that's coming from your heart, I should see it in your actions. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Again, let me uh, attach the spiritual rules to what I'm saying. See, this is one brother who don't pull stuff out no heart. This is one brother who don't bring no riddles around here. This brother will always take you to the unadulterated word of God that supports what I'm telling you right now. Because that's why I get it from, okay? So let's go now to Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I, I love scripture here. I love it. I love it. <laughs> let's go to the book of Matthew, okay? Matthew 12. Matthew chapter 12, okay? Watch this. Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 to 35. Okay? This is Jesus speaking. Okay? 
Watch this now. Matthew 12, verses 34 to 25. So Jesus speaking, these are rules. These are laws. These are spiritual laws. And spiritual mean that if, I, uh, if I'm doing it physically, I'm activating in something in the spiritual realm to work in favor or manifest my desire based on the specific rules I'm following and based on the results I want to achieve, then I'm doing what this rule say. It's a spiritual rule. That means the spiritual realm must respond to it because that's the origin of all things. In other words, I'm tweaking things in the spiritual realm with the hope and expectation based on the promise of that particular rule to manifest it for me physically. Right there, I discount and kick in the bush the demonic gospel of name it and claim it. I just name it and claim it. I don't follow no rules, just name it and claim it voodoo. No, 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 no. So watch this, right? Matthew 12, 33, th sorry, 34 to 35. Jesus says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out, listen, for out of the abundance, that word means out of the overflow, uh, out of the overflow of your heart, meaning that what is coming out, it's coming out because the heart does not have the capacity to either restrain it or restrict it or hold it back anymore. Or it's so much that it's bursting out of the seams. In this case, it's coming out of your mouth, meaning that whatever's in your heart really is your mind. Same thing, your mind, your soul, same thing, interchangeable. He said, if your heart is filled with hate, filled with anger, filled with love, it's saying out of the abundance or the overflow of that, watch this now, out of the abundance of the heart, by default, whether I want to say it or not, my mouth will begin to speak those things I have deep in here. In other words, action must follow not just the contents of my heart, what is brimming over or overflowing. So if I say I love Deidre, and that's an abundance of that in my heart, then my action is all I'm, I'm, I'm uh, affectionate with her. I'm pulling the chair out when we go for dinner and kissing her on the cheek and telling her I love her. I, I, I want to buy a nice jewelry and take on vacations. I am happy when she's happy because the overflow of love in me is dictating my course with her. Don't tell me you love me. And you can't wait for the opportunity to leave your foot in me and to talk to me any kind of way and to tell others how no good I am and to deceive me and to cheat on me and to betray me. Where did you get this misconception of love? Love is an action word. And that action will be predicated on the contents of my heart towards the subject of what I love. So ladies, I just gave you a nugget there. Guys, I just gave you a nugget. She's saying she love you, but she she cheated. You found out. And she's sorry she made a mistake. I made a mistake. Or he cheated. And then your friends come to you, well, child, you know, men nowadays, you know, you that's life. You know, we live in a different era, you know, but he's paying the bills. It ain't a matter of paying the bills, man. You said you love me. So love, if you have an overflow of this love, there should be some kind of discipline in you to restrain yourself when temptation come. But if you yield to the temptation, I have to go back to the rules. And the rule says, hey, the, but if the, the, in the, out of the abundance of the heart, you are doing what you are doing because you are overflowing with lust you are overflowing with sexual perversion you are overflowing with deceitfulness and not being faithful so if i got any kind of sense i will stop listening to what you say and watch what you do i try and help you that's all i'm trying to do I don't tell me another, I don't want to hear another sentence with the word love in it from you. You don't have to tell me nothing. 
I am watching action now. You too, Rev, I watch in action. You said you love us like Christ loved the church. But I was in some hard times, and you know the whole story. And I came to the one that claimed to love me. And the one that claimed to love me turned their back on me and influenced others to do the same. Again, I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm watching you now. Why? Jesus said it. You will know them by their fruit. So let's go back to my original thought. Watch this. So Kevin, I understand what you're saying, right? But here's the part I don't get. Okay, if if this lady or this guy see the inconsistency of what this person say and what they do, then why are they still with them? Now we're going somewhere. I was hoping you'd ask me that. Remember what I said to you before. When it comes, see, people don't realize that consistency is the only, or let me not say only, the primary ingredient needed to give the results, you know. So what happens is they're programmed. They already program. See, when you do something over and over, it becomes a habit. Even though you know it's going to produce the same result. Even though she have dated two guys who displayed the exact same results that this third guy is currently displaying. So therefore, the devil is going to use her consistency. But she doesn't know. How is he going to do it? Well, even though you see that, you can't judge people. Everybody different. Give them a chance. The big red flags just flow, and I mean all over the place. Eh? Flags all over the place. All you see is consistency. But our spirit speaking to you. But what the spirit is trying to do to you is remain consistent like you were with the other two. But in this case, like the other two, expect a different result. The doctor said, if you continue smoking cigarettes, you're going to develop some form of cancer. Ah, doc, get out of here. And you smoke, you, still, you smoke in one pack when you met him? To show this doctor he wrong, I can smoke four packs. Take that. And now when you went back, huh? all the, all the MRI charts and the CVT or whatever the mother charts name, the charts catch a fire where it can't even record all of the cancer in your body, right? Your belief excuse me, or what you claim to believe means nothing if you're consistent at the rules that are supposed to give you, listen carefully, a predetermined result. The results are already predetermined. That's why it's called a law. That's why it's called a rule. Because the idea is if I follow it, I must get a pre. Pre means before, a predetermined, meaning that we already know this is going to happen. We just needed you to follow this rule to get that result. So Satan says, listen, don't judge him, man. Look how handsome he is. He's got bow legs. Huh? You see those nice athletic calves? You know how many other women want that? Even though, okay, you saw the flags, this man doing the same thing. My two ex were doing the exact identical thing. But there's a voice convincing you, no, be consistent, man. Be consistent. You can get a different result. It was Einstein, right, that says, uh, insanity, I call it stupidity, is doing the same thing uh -huh, over and over with the expectation of getting a different result. That's crazy, eh? That's crazy. That's like you have a marker, a, a fluorescent marker. That's the marker that you highlight stuff in on your notes, right? And three of you, myself, Tom, and Jerry, or three of us have fluorescent markers. And we're consistent in rubbing this thing on the on the paper that we have. And two of them, they rubbing it, but they already know. No matter how much times I rub this, I'm going to get this fluorescent color. But I'm over here rubbing it and saying, I don't care what y'all says. I don't care what y'all say. Green is going to come from this fluorescent marker. That's equivalent to the example about the lady I just gave you. You've seen the red flags. You've proven this principle to produce what you saw in the past. But for whatever sick reason you believe, you've been convinced, 
I'm going to remain consistent, which is the same, synonymous with faithful, which is synonymous with uh, to be steadfast, unmovable. But the, the difference in the formula now, which I added, is that consistency is supposed to produce a different result than the rules I'm being consistent with. I've been consistent in tolerating their mess. I've been consistent in tolerating their lies. I've been consistent in them cheating on me with other people. I've been consistent with the other two, and it has produced a failed relationship. I'm doing the exact same rules, laws, and principles, but this time, delusionally, I believe it's going to give me something different. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. That's what I'm trying to do. So he says here, in verse 34 of Matthew 13, 12, Matthew 12. O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil, how could you be so evil, speaking good things? For of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Verse 35, a good man out of the good treasures of his bare heart, bringing forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart, bring forth evil things. So he's saying here now that whatever is in your heart that you're bringing out, you've been consistent at it. So much so that your consistency produced an abundance. As a result of that, it took it to the next level where you now begin to act upon what's in your heart, whether you're speaking it or actually doing it. So like I would have mentioned earlier, the, the, the con consistency begins from a person's heart. It's what they've marinated and taken in and just playing it back over and over and over and over and over and over again until they become it. Okay, let's look at another rule to prove that. So let's go to Proverbs again. Let's go to Proverbs 23, verse 7. Okay, just to back up what we just said. Proverbs 23, verse 7 says what? For as a person thinks well in their foot, no, in their hand, no, as a person thinks in their heart. In other words, what they're consistently playing over and over and over. Let me give you another example. Remember when you first met your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. The consistency was you thought about them all the time. And all of the thoughts were what you're going to do next. I want us to go driving this weekend. I want us to go for dinner. I want us to travel. And all the thoughts are beautiful. So therefore, you create this beautiful image of you. And this, you, you call this fantasizing. So you're fantasizing about you on the motorcycle and this big old hulky guy, you hugging him up and you, you're so happy that you have someone in your life and the consistent thoughts of love and joy and peace. Watch this. You become that. Whatever he asks you to do, honey, you think you can pick up the mail for me? Of course I go on. What else? You don't need nothing else, baby. You sure that's all you want? Why? Because of the consistent thought as you think in your heart, so you become. You are miserable, you are mean, you are, people don't want to be around you, why? Because as you think in your heart, you think misery, you look for another avenue to complain, you look to just be annoying. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he or so shall he become. Again, Kevin, where does consistency begin? From the heart. Whether you're aware of it or not. Because the idea of the heart is to keep it going over and over and over and over and over until I do what? Display it. Until I do what? Manifest it. So again, if you say you love me, if you said I'm the best thing since like bread, if you say that you love me more than hog love slop, okay, I'm done with what you're saying now. I've noted that. Duly noted. Now let's see your actions. Because according to the rules, what you're saying, if you truly believe it, then that means that's constantly going on in you. Then by default, I should see the fruit of what you're saying. So folks, what I say to you is stop playing games with yourself with these people, man. Stop it. When people say stuff to you, make promises to you, whatever it is, again, be clear with yourself, you know. Watch their actions and stop making excuses for their actions. Because in, in making excuses for the actions, what you're saying is that the law is erroneous. The laws are foolish and false. That's what you're saying. You're saying, let me put aside these laws because they're very misleading. Even though they think a certain way in their heart, it is possible that they can produce a different, consistent result. Keyword. See, 
there's this thing called character. And no matter how much a person fake, no matter how much they pretend, character will always say, okay, look here, Kevin, I've had enough. Let me introduce these people to the real you. Let me give you an example of it. So you met a guy, you met a girl, a guy, and they're very seemingly humble, very nice, very soft-spoken. You could barely hear them. Sometimes you have to tell them across the table, speak up, I could barely hear you. Oh, what I was saying the other day, <laughs> as if they horse or something, but whatever, right? Now, they want you to believe this is who they are consistently. Then one day, you're not a small disagreement, minor stuff. And this person turned into the Incredible Hulk and start popping those F words. You, you know what, blah, blah, F this, F, blah, 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 blah. Character. So the character now realizes that it's exposed. I'm outside of the body. So it retreats, it goes back in. So it goes back in, and so the fake person come forward. Oh, man, I apologize. I apologize. Listen, that's not me. Honey, that's not me. That is not me. You know, the devil took a hold of me. You know, I, and I was like, I apologize. I'm sorry. So they go buy you roses. They will buy you a whole new uh, space shuttle or something like that to, to cause you to erase this from your memory. I don't want you to keep in your mind the true me because that's what you saw. How could you determine that, Kevin? The rules said, out of the abundance, out of the overflow of your heart, or who you are, you will become, or you will produce, or you will manifest. I go in by the rules. I'm watching your actions. See, you can't hide character, my friend. And that's what I love about it. You could fake all you want. At some point, the true you, character, it's going to say, look, I had enough of this garbage, all right? Let me show this person who I really am. And that usually comes through frustration or anger or they're not getting what they want. I hope you're all taking notes, you know. Huh? You're all going to Dr. Phil and all these people spending thousands of dollars. I'm giving you some sound information right now, okay? Some good information, free. <laughs> so character comes as a result of consistency, man. I've been training for 53 years being Kevin. I can't be nobody else. I could fake for a little while, but eventually you can see the real me. Because 53 years I've been doing this. Practice make perfect. Nobody could be Kevin like Kevin could. That's why they could pretend, but eventually they'll be exposed. Let me give an example of it. And I'm going to show you where you even passed the test. I've had people who... Uh, before uh, YouTube got a hold of these scammers, right? There were people who would write me and do a, a photo clip of this thing that a scammer would have sent them with my name and with my photo, with my wife and I on it. And they would go into this prophecy, and at the end of it, they would request some funds from them. Now, those who consistently watch Kevin, okay? will know how Kevin operate. So immediately say, now hold on, hold on, now hold on. Kevin don't ever, ever ask us for no money. Kevin never mentioned no orphanage in no Nigeria. Uh-uh. So what do they do? Because they know the character of this Kevin. They send me an email. Uh, uh, Kevin or Minister Ewing, Pastor, whatever. Uh, I'm just writing, and please take a look at the uh, attachment. I know this is not you, but just for confirmation, because I watch what he say, because I, if there's one thing I know about you, you don't beg for money. Character. I could fake being anyone and anything else, but I master who Kevin is because I've been doing it for 53 years. Consistency. I'm trying to help you. Consistency. You're going to appreciate this word. Consistency. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care what they say. I am looking, the way that I'm going to know there's consistency in you, I am always checking what you are producing, what you are manifesting. What is the output from this character that you're trying to hide? Because the true you is going to be consistent. If you are a procrastinator, 
Well, when you first come on the job, you can try to do everything to hide your procrastination. But after a while, it's going to come out. If you are a liar, you will try to hide it. In other words, you're going to impersonate someone who tells the truth for a while. But see, character wouldn't allow it. Because your character gets fed up with the fake version of you. Write that down. Your character becomes fed up or frustrated with the fake version of yourself. Why is this Ewing? This is so because the fake version of myself cannot be consistent with the true me. Because the true me, my true character, have been doing this for 53 years. And it's easy as a walk in the park. But if I try to be something that I'm not, it's very arduous, very difficult, very strenuous, very labor intense. Because there are many other systems and components that make up me that I have to try to convince to be this fake. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. Okay? As he think it, verse 7 of Proverbs 23, for as he thinks in his heart, so, so is he. That's who he is. Accept the fact. That's who she is. Except I know you love her. I know she's beautiful. I know she have a beautiful shape and a beautiful job. And I know you fantasize six million times what it would be like as this woman, this woman being your wife to your side. I know that you're fantasizing. You say, man, listen, I, I love her. But you, you love what you see on the outside. You know nothing about his or her character. You have zero knowledge of that. From afar off, you see based on whatever you're saying, and now you're assuming. See, what happens is that whenever we love people, we by default, we by default become their defense attorney. They don't even know us. They don't even know we are an attorney, okay? Internally, we begin to defend. And whatever we see that does not correlate with what we like, then we defend it. We make up, we, 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 we fix it in our own mind. So she's pretty, she's beautiful, I love her. But she's always flirting with guys. She's just friendly. Come on, she's attractive. Men will be attracted to her. See that? I'm defending her. I haven't even talked to her as yet. I don't even know her as yet. But because I like her, I immediately go into Johnny Cochran mode, defense mode. All of a sudden, I am F. Lee Bailey, the biggest lawyer in the world defending her. So now when I do get to talk to her, even if she speaks in a way I don't like, I make excuses. Why? Because I love what I see on the outside and I've already... Uh, Taylor made how you should be mentally. So what I'm going to do to convince me is that I'm going to go with how I've envisioned you in my mind and dismiss all of the physical signs that you're displaying towards me. Then at the end of the day, when I can't take it no more and you've cheated on me and had all these Chinese children that don't belong to me and made a mockery out of the marriage and all, now I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to blame it on you. You are unfaithful. You are a liar. Hold on, hold on, let me get it straight. But she was that be when you met her. You put her in an attire in, in an attire that she didn't even realize to comfort the parts of her you didn't like. I try to help you. I trying to help you. That's all I trying to do. I try I'm helping somebody right now. I'm helping you make that decision right now to walk away from that liar you call a boyfriend. I'm trying to help you make the decision right now to walk away from that liar who you are engaged to right now. You are looking for the confirmation you're getting it in right now, in living color, right now, right now. I am saving you a lifetime of misery right now. I am saving you divorce costs. I am saving you alimony. I'm saving you child support. I'm saving you to keep your right mind. I'm doing all of that for you right now, and I don't even know you. And all I'm saying is look at the consistency in behavior. Just it. You think you could live with this for the rest of your life? I'm trying to help you. I ain't even charging you nothing. I ain't charging no consonant fee. I ain't charging no marital fee I, for free. This is how much I care about you, okay? I care about your future so much. And I see the pain on the horizon waiting on your behind. So I am helping you for free right now. Walk. Whatever it is, consider it a loss. Whatever investment you made, consider it a loss. Over the simple fact, the period of time you've been with this person, 
it has been concluded and is now being confirmed right now that what they say does not match ever with what they do. I try and help you. So let's look at another scripture. Let's go to Matthew 15. Let's go to Matthew 15. I love the laws. Matthew 15. And we're going to look at verse 16 to verse 20. Matthew 15, 16 to verse 20. Listen to what it says. And Jesus said, are ye also yet without understanding? You still ain't getting this? Verse 17 of Matthew uh, 15. Yeah. Verse 17 of Matthew 15. Jesus still speaking. He says, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entered in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. But those things uh -huh, which proceed out of the mouth comes from the way again, comes forth from the heart. You big, fat, sloppy. I don't even know why the day I marry you, you nasty, good for nothing. You would disgust me. 20 minutes later, honey, I don't know why I say these things. But I, I Please forgive me. You know I love you. You know I was in love with you from day one. Let me say this again. But those things which proceeded out of the mouth, oh, I got you, comes from the mouth. No. What, what did you read? Comes from the heart. Why? Because the consistency of what is in your heart, according to scripture, will produce an overflow. And the overflow, by default, will come through your mouth. I thought she was big, fat, and sloppy a very long time. And one day, I was triggered through my anger. So what was in my heart is now coming out of my mouth. Why well, helping somebody today? I helping someone today. Now you could stay there if you love abuse. If you could stay there, but while you you've made the decision to stay there, I need you to get a list for me, and I need sorry I need you to get a paper and a pen because I want to give you some stuff that I need you to scratch off for the future. So if you're gonna stay there, based on all the rules I just gave you, so follow me. Scratch off peace, scratch off contentment, scratch off joy, scratch off having a life. <laughs> Remove those things going forward. If it is your decision to remain in all of this evidence you're getting right now to confirm why you need to run away from that situation. Those who are not married. I try to help you. I try to help you. So he says here, but those things, verse 18 of Matthew 15, but those things which proceeded out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile the man. Verse 19, for out of the heart, listen carefully, for out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murder, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemies, and so on. And also, this also means that out of the heart comes love and peace and joy, same thing. What it's saying here is that the origin of the consistency of a person's character is the result of what's in their heart. So in other words, when they lashed out at you, especially if you've seen a consistency of it, there is a root here. You're not dealing with a tentacle. The tentacle, meaning them lashing out, is the evidence of there being a root where this came from. And that root has been uh, identified here is from the heart. I'm trying to help you. I'm, I'm trying to assist you here. Verse 19 of Matthew 15, For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witness, blasphemy. Verse 20, These are the things which defile or even corrupt a man but to eat with unwashed hands, that, that, that ain't no big issue. So we have proven in three scriptures so far that the origin of where the mystery of consistency begins is in its, a person's heart. Whatever is manifested, it's an abundance 
And it makes sense because in Proverbs 23, verse 14, 14, verse 23, we read that in all labor, in all work, in work and labor simply means consistency of doing something will produce a profit, will produce an increase. So the scripture says that out of the abundance, abundance means increase is more than enough out of the abundance of that, meaning that the heart was working on this consistently, working on the hate towards you consistently, working on the unforgiveness towards you consistently, working on deceiving on you, cheating on you, lying to you. The heart been working a me day in and day out. So the Bible says now, of, out of all this work, labor is going to come. Sorry, profit is going to come. Meaning that you're going to see what you, when he curse you out, that's just parts of the profit. There's a lot more in that heart because he's, he's been working at it. She's been working at it. The mystery of consistency. I'm loving it already. Okay, so to be consistent means to be steady, to be firm, to be stable, to be constant, to be persistent. I'm not going to stop doing this. And I'm telling you all of this because going into your fast next month, you got to make up your mind from now. I don't care who or what. I am going to be consistent. Why? Because I want to see change in my life. I want a different result. I realized where I was going wrong. I realized that I was doing it because I've been broke for so long. So you know what I did, Kevin? Say give to the poor and fast. So I did that. I didn't believe in it. I didn't really care. I just wanted to to punch in my car to say I was here. Okay, I did it. But I don't really believe it. I don't really subscribe to it. But he keeps saying that if you give to the poor and you go on a fast, blah, 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 you can be uh, debt free. It didn't happen. So guess what? I come back to Kevin. Kevin, listen, I won't complain. And I saying God is a liar. I saying another. But I only could tell you what I experienced. And guess what? I've been on the fast, just like you say, I did a three day fast, seven day fast, dry fast, kangaroo, keep most watermelon fast, every other fast I did, Kevin. And guess what? I gave to the poor, just like you said, and nothing happened for me. So let me see. You went on the fast. Like you said. And you were consistent, right? With following the rules. Before and after the fast. So now they are tear wide open because there's like rules. What you talking about? I thought just give the money and do the fast. No, I said a lot of things, but they only threw things that you thought were easy to do. And then you're supposed to get manifestation. And aside from all of that too, I mean, who told you when it was going to be manifested? Because I read in the rules. Ecclesiastes 3.1, that there's a time and a season, all right? Okay, there's a time and there's a season. The time means that there's a period in which it will happen. The season means there's an, there's an appointment for you within that period. In other words, okay, the doctor says, you call the dentist, you call the dentist and you, you want to get a teeth done, whatever, today, one of your tooth, whatever. And the doctor says, I have an opening between 10 a.m. and 12 noon, okay? Meaning that this is a time I have available, okay? Remember, there's a time and a season for everything. What I want is make an appointment within that time. Give me 10 o'clock. I'm making an appointment for that time. So the Bible says there's a time and a season. You don't know the time it's going to happen. You may know you in the season, but you don't know the time. So now I see what in your heart. You're looking to get rich quick. You don't lose all your money. You're looking for things to just turn around. So God needs to work on your time. Okay, God, huh? I don't do my verse. I didn't eat nothing. I don't give a couple dollars. Remember, where, where, where my fruit? Where your fruit? Where your fruit? So the reality is you care nothing about God rules. You don't even, you, the truth is you don't even believe this stuff. <laughs> you don't even believe this stuff. You are just so desperate. You are so broke. There's so much pressure on you. You figure, let me try this. Let me try this. And, and if this works, then I can run with it. But the truth is I have no root here. I don't really believe this. So you, you see you see the difference now. And a lot of people are like this. And if, if you read my little summary on the top of this video, Christians are very inconsistent with their beliefs. They, they are not, they have no foundation. 
And as a result of that, anyone could come there with any kind of Alice in Wonderland, hocus pocus garbage. And because there is no root, they're pulled away from it. They, they're gone, drift away. Anyone could come to them and, and, and show them something in the Bible with, with no context. And they say, wow, that's deep. Wow, man, that's, that's deep. That's deep. So where you get that from? Out of my own mind. But you see, I have a scripture to back it up. So that's what happens. So going into next month fasting, you, you have to be, I've, I'm giving you all the tools before we get there. I'm telling you what to expect, what not to expect. I'm telling you what you need to put the focus on because you want to do it the right way. But the key in this teaching here is you want to be consistent at doing it the right way. Don't be consistent at doing it the wrong way and foolishly believing that you can get the God promised result. You are delusional. It will never happen. You have to be consistent and what the word says. And when I say consistent, consist, consistent before the fast, during the fast, and after the fast, that even though things are getting worse, and they will after the fast, I am consistent in adhering to the rules. I will continue to do the will of God. I will continue to do what God told me to do because until I see the fruit, and Kevin already made it clear, if I am consistent in my labor, it has to produce a profit for me. He showed me the scripture. He didn't make it up. He showed it to me. All right? So watch this now. Let's look at some scriptures that have to do with consistency, all right? So let's go to John. We can look at John chapter 15 from verse 4 to verse 7. I love this one. John chapter 15. And we're going to read from verse 4 to verse 7, okay? These are the laws, biblical rules, biblical laws in regard to consistency. It's all throughout the Bible. Everything that is done. Jesus himself said, I am the same God today, yesterday, today, and forevermore. In other words, I'm consistent. Anyone who trying to pull, teach you a gospel and pull in Jesus out of his consistency, is a false gospel. I can help you. Jesus said hell is real. Jesus said there's a lake of fire. Jesus spoke on hell far more during his ministry than he spoke about heaven. He mentioned it multiple times. Consistency. But somebody came along and says, well, you know, I don't believe in hell. And I don't believe a good God will cause you to burn forever. So I stopped listening to you. You're trying to change the consistency of Jesus. And you're trying to bring me in your foolish uh, cycle. It'll never happen. Never. So what that mean? How come I'm able to do that? I'm grounded. And I'm solid in my foundation because I believe what I read. And I've studied it and I've seen that what, what did I see throughout scripture? Consistency of what Jesus said. But this fool of here is coming to tell me how he feels. He's sitting down and saying he feels there shouldn't. So every time he buck up on something in the scripture that he or she don't like, then this is where their feeling come in. I don't feel. So I should alter my life and the rules that I abide by based on your delusional feelings. You and your daddy, the devil, are liars. <laughs> okay? All of y'all. So let's go to John 15. And these are from this point forward, the scriptures, the four or five scriptures I'm going to give you, there are many, many more, all pointing to consistency. So watch this. John chapter 15, from verse 4 to verse 7, Jesus speaking. Abide in me, it's consistency. What does the word abide mean? It means to remain. It means to stay. To not move means to be consistent. Stationary. Abide in me, stay in me, remain. Jesus is saying, remain. Be consistent, Kevin. You will see these promises? Be consistent. Jumping around isn't consistent and expecting the That ain't going to give you the results. Speaking in tongues, there's nothing wrong with speaking in tongues. I believe in it. But if you're running around, shut that up, bop, 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 but you're not being consistent with the rules, you are an interpreter. You need to go get a job to tourism and promote your country because there's some people who come to your country don't speak English, but they speak shut that tap, bo, to, to, to. Go, go deal with them. You can get some results over there. But with this here, no, you got to follow the rules. <laughs> no, no, no. That that for you who keep flipping and church and, and, and some assaulting, you 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 in the wrong profession. It's not going to give you the results we're seeking. You're a gymnast 
and you don't know. You're gifted. You're gifted in gymnastics. So stop it right now. And go down by the gym, okay? And let one of them fellas train you to, to, for the Olympics. But if you want to succeed here, follow the rules. For, see, listen, y'all know I don't play, right? <laughs> listen to me. Listen, see, unlike y'all, I'm, I'm a realist. So when I see all of this foolishness, all of this running around and sha ta 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 oro toto roko she te 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 everybody saying the same thing. Now I see why you are 13 years in at a $65,000 loss because that's how much you've invested in the 13 years and your life is worse than when you started off. Why? All because you have misplaced your talent. You're a gymnast and you in church. You know foreign language and you ain't working for the translation people and the tourism board. I'm confused. I'm confused. Why are you wasting your talent? All of these languages you speak in, but you don't understand. You're getting the same result. Every time they crank up the music, nobody could do the three and a half quarter twist like you. Nobody could do the long jump like you in church. Knocking down people. Only to be further in debt. Only to be more broke than what you started off originally. Mighty God. Y'all y'all don't y'all don't see a problem here? Yeah? You don't see a problem here? Yeah? Gifted with the art. Of, of of being a gymnast and refuse. You know what? When Jesus come back here, Jesus can deal with all you. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Remember the story about the talents and the guy, you know, there was one who had five talents, there's one who had two and one who had one. Anyway, the one with the five and the two, he 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 invested it. He was consistent in the investment. And when the 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 master came back, he said, see master, I went invested, meaning that I put to work or labor which you already gave me. As a result, according to your rules, it produced a profit. So I have five more than what I originally had. I have a total of 10 now. The one with two said, me too. Guess what I did? I, 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 I took the two and I worked what you gave me. And as a result of it, it produced more, just like you promised. You said that with all labor, there's profit. And guess what? I got four instead of two. The gymnast over here, okay? The, the, the bilingual, or the trilingual one over here, sha ta ta roto to to ti ti ti, all this uh, uh, space language over here. So what did you do with your gymnastic skills? Well, I had to show them how holy I was. And to prove how holy I was to the past and my fellow parishioners, I did the three and a half twist turn and the backflip with the Kung Fu chap. How about that? Yeah, how about that? And what does that profit you? Well, if I'm going to be honest, uh, nothing. I have nothing. I'm broke, busted, disgusted, cannot be trusted. Me and my family in the corner eating custard, and that's exactly what it did for me. And I am fully aware of that. And you, you bilingualist over here, you shata ta roto to because you say everything. It's amazing because you're speaking in tongues. This is so amazing to me. You're saying the same foreign language over and over, but amazingly, when you say it, you give a different interpretation. I, I don't get that. Make me understand that. Shandala Rototo Shititi, God says he's moving with swift judgment. Okay, that's Monday. Tuesday, Shandala Rokoto TTTTT, God says he's getting ready to bless everybody. Okay, that's Tuesday. Okay, Wednesday, Rekete Chondo Rokikiki, God says there are five people in here. You are going to be millionaires. Now, I don't understand. How come this, this language that you speak? All right, make me understand this. How come this language that you speak, you're saying the same thing every time, but there's a different interpretation? Why should I take you serious? But let me look at the bigger picture. You're consistent in your foolery. You're consistent in your stupidity. You're consistent in your performance. And what does this consistency of your labor brought you? Profit. What was the profit? A life of stupidity, a life of instability, a life of nothing. I try and help you. So Jesus said, showing consistency, abide in me. John 15 verse 4. That's how he starts off. 
The word abide means to stay. Stay with me. Be consistent with me. Remain. That's what the word abide means. Abide in me and I in you. This is Jesus speaking. John 15 verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. So what is he saying? This is so powerful because even the word, even though the word there abide is referring to being uh, consistent in terms of staying and remaining, the meaning is even deeper than that spiritually based on this text. What he's saying, when you abide in me, I, Jesus, who you supposed to remain in, who you're supposed to stay in, this is going to be the life. This is going to be the fuel, Jesus, that is whom you're abiding and staying in, to produce the things that I've said. He's going to go on to say, if you choose not to stay, if you choose not to remain, if you choose, and all of this means to be consistent in me, Jesus, then I got, I got to cut you off. Because the truth is, when you don't remain, then you're, you're detaching or disconnecting yourself from life, which is Jesus. I try to help you here. Watch this. Abide in me and I in you. Listen this, listen this wording. As the branch, he's giving an analogy. He's giving an example of how this abiding should take place. So he's saying, you, Kevin, abide in me, Jesus. Meaning that remain steadfast in me. Okay, Jesus, how do I stay in you? I mean, you ain't here. I can't see you. So do I jump inside of you? No. To abide in me is to obey my word. Not to alter. Not to amend. Not to edit. Whatever my word say, and you are consistently doing, you are remaining in me. You are staying steadfast in me, Jesus. That's how you abide. Now he says, if you abide in me, watch what's going to happen by default. I will abide in you. I will be in you. I will remain with you. Okay? Then he gives the example. As the branch, because he's showing the this abiding between the two of them, he's showing you there's a source of life, the ultimate great life being downloaded to the one who didn't have no life prior to the abiding. He says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. So this is what he's saying. Kevin, if you abide in me, meaning that if you adhere to my rules. If you drown out the background noise of air, all of this uh, antichrist spirit coming now to you telling you hell ain't real and, and Jesus wasn't the son of God and, and, and Kemet in Egypt is where the Christians steal the religion from and, and you are the real Jews and the black people. He says, Kevin, listen to my word. You didn't read none of that when it came to abiding, right? Abide in me, Kevin, means to do my laws, do my rules. Just how you teach these people and put the focus on it for them into doing that. Nothing else. They ain't got to sow seed. They ain't got to do none of that. If they choose to do that, that on them. But you don't implement that because that's not in here. Tell them my words. Tell them this is what they have to follow. Now, when they follow these rules, this now create the abiding. This now, they're, this is how they are in me, abiding in me and me and them. Now, Kevin, watch here. The results of this exercise, because this is what they all want to achieve, they want to produce a fruit, meaning that all of the promises of the life that I've come to give them and give them more abundantly, all of the contentment and giving them the desires of the heart, these are the fruits that they want, Kevin. Excuse me. This is the fruit that they seek. So as I would have said in my word, I said, if you abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, you, Kevin, are the branch. You cannot bear these fruits I'm promising you of your own. So abiding means if you're doing my word, Kevin, Kevin, if you take a seed and you put it in the ground with the right soil, 
and water it. Kevin, you don't have to pray. You don't have to prophesy and say, apple seed, come forth now. Produce apple right now. Come forth now, apple seed. And summer salts. No, Kevin. So this is the analogy I want for you. You don't have to raise your voice. You don't have to shout. You don't have to scream. Kevin, abide in me. And what is that, Kevin? Do what I tell you to do. And the fruit will come by default. I try to help you. I try to get you to cut back on those gym classes. I try to get you to go from speaking in tongues to understand the rubbish you're trying to say. Okay? He said, I love, you all getting this? This is a revelation you know. He said, abide in me, stay or remain in me. And I, in you. And we define abiding as doing what he has asked us to do. Why? Because he is his word. The Bible says that there are three that bear witness in heaven. God, the word, which is Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Drop down to verse 14. It says, and this Word became flesh. Who became flesh? Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Psalms 107 verse 20, he said, I have sent my Word, which is Jesus, to heal you. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 19, somewhere around there, I believe. And John began to talk about this uh, vision that he had. And he saw this person on this horse with a vesture dipped in blood, like a banner. And on the banner, it's referring to Jesus now, it read the word of God, meaning Jesus. So that's four biblical examples that the word of God is Jesus himself. With that said, let's go back to John 15, verse 4. Jesus speaking, it's in red letters in my Bible, New Testament. Jesus said, abide in me. Who are you? I am the word. What does the word abide mean? It means to stay. It means to remain. In other words, it means to be consistent. Don't waver. Don't doubt. Keep believing the word. Even when you don't believe it, keep doing what it tells you to do. Father, help my unbelief. Father, assist me in the area where I'm having doubt. But consistently be at it because whatever, like I said earlier, you're consistent at, it must produce fruit. But be careful what your ingredients are because it could produce a fruit that you don't like. The law of consistency will produce increase or profit bottom line abide in me uh-huh verse 4 of john 15 and i in you give me the example now jesus as the branch as the branch that's you as you kevin you are a branch he's giving this an analogy he's giving this analogy he's giving this example as the branch which is kevin kevin as a branch all by itself you cannot bear fruit you can't except He's going to give the exception, except it. What is it? The branch abide. What does the word abide mean? To stay, to remain, to be consistent. But in the context of what we're talking about, to stay, to remain, to be consistent in what? In Jesus. But who is Jesus? The word of the living God. So he's saying be consistent in the word, remain in the word, stay in the word. And what's going to happen? Just like when you put a seed in the ground and the water hit it, you don't have to come watch it every second. You don't got to do none of that. By default, the, it will produce and eventually fruit because you did your part. Again, let's go back to the rules. Proverbs 14, 23 verse, 14 verse 23. In all labor, I did the labor. I stayed in the word. There is profit. The word profit means increase. In other words, he's saying, now get ready to produce fruit, Kevin. But let me be clear with you. You ain't gonna produce fruit through jakata, rakatata. You ain't gonna produce fruit by somersaulting in church. You ain't gonna produce fruit by trying to be loud and notice in church. No, because you're doing everything except those. Now, what's gonna happen though? You're gonna get something because you're consistent in that. But what you're gonna get, you're gonna dislike. However, you work for it. 
because your consistency in what you labored for, according to Proverbs 14, 23, must produce a profit. Have to, whether you like it or not, whether you want it or not. It's a law, it's a rule, it's a principle. So verse 5, he says, I am the vine. Let's be clear. I am the V-I-N-E. And what is on this vine? You, the branch. I am the vine. Jesus says, I am the vine. He's also the word. Ye are the branches. Let's be clear. So basically, he's literally breaking down in verse 5 of John 15, what he just said. In verse 4 of John 15, he's even making it more, see, simplifying it now. So that you will have a better visual to encourage you to be consistent in the right thing. And that is his word. Not this guy over here who's saying that there's no heaven. There's no, sorry, there's no hell. Not this guy over here who's saying that Jesus really isn't the son of God. If you're following them, you're not abiding in the word. Watch this. Verse 5 of John 15. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abided. Father, I love it because these are laws. Jesus says, he that abided, he that remained, he that stays, he that is consistent in my word, he that abided in me and I in him, the same, the same, not somebody else, the same, not nobody else, the one who's following these rules, the same bring it forth fruit. No, I didn't read that. What did you read? The same bring it forth much fruit. Isn't this what I'm saying to you? If you're consistent in something in your labor, according to the law of Proverbs 14 and 23, you have to produce more. In other words, there's a profit you're going to get from your labor. Your labor was what you consistently did. Jesus is saying it here. If you abide in me, if you continue to labor in my word, you ain't gonna just produce a fruit. No, because that wouldn't be a profit. At minimum, watch these rules now. My, my, my efforts into this work or my consistency, according to this law, must always exceed my output or it should produce a profit for me. So Jesus says, now listen, I just give you an example. I, Jesus, I'm the vine. I am the word of God. And if you, Kevin, the branch, if you are constantly in my word, if you are constantly reading, constantly sharing, constantly giving to people in terms of giving them my word, my rules, Kevin, it should never be a shocker to you that you are producing much fruit. I can use this example again. And the reason why I keep, and I can keep saying this because I know the vultures coming out. I know the seed beggars. I know they come in. And I love to use my life as an example. I'm not the preacher that will stand on the pulpit and preach, but never practice or even produce what he preaches. Me, I'm a perfect example. Okay, perfect example. How? How is it that Kevin survives? How is he successful? How is it he able to have left his job, retired, his wife retired? How is all of that to happen? And this man could maintain and sustain his family. And watch this, watch the prophet and help, help by the guidance of God, other people. This man have no restrictions in his life in terms of living an abundant life. But here's the kicker. Why isn't this man begging for money on every time he comes on this channel? Why isn't he saying, sow a seed? Why isn't he saying stuff like, sow into next month if you want to see a harvest? And why isn't none of those gimmicks with this man? How is it I can listen to this man for two and three hours of him putting in his time, and he is never, ever asking for anything? But yet this man is enjoying his life. Yet this man is blessed beyond measure. And this man is affecting the lives of other people. Now let me read it again, in case you didn't get it. Kevin, verse 5 of John 15. I am divine, Kevin. I, let's, let's start off with that. I, Jesus, am divine. You, Kevin, you are the branches, okay? 
And he that abide in me, he that commit to my word, he that point my, point my people to me, he that constantly push people to the word of God. He says, he that abided in me and I in him, the same, the same man who's committed to the word of God shall bring forth much fruit because he realized without me, Jesus, he can do absolutely nothing. He don't need to be a part of the Federation of the Baptist Committee. He don't need to be a part of the Pentecostal Circle of Divine Bishops. He don't need to be a part of none of that. Because he understands if he followed the rules, he will garner an audience. He will garner a people who would listen to what God is saying that will outweigh those who have the Federation. I tell you this all the time. I live here in the Bahamas, right? We have, I'm sure we have must be over 20,000 churches, right? And listen to this carefully. This is no bragging, but it's only proving what I'm telling you here. My, uh, my YouTube channel subscribers is at, I think, 239,000 right now. Subscribers. 239 subscribers. And watch this. All the churches combined in the Bahamas don't have that much people, not even near that. How is it that this man, who said right in this little den, with this little video thing, why are people over a quarter of a million people, follow, and that's just on YouTube, why are they following this guy and these other people have problems just trying to get people to come to church? Well, let's see. This guy here decided to follow the rules here that it isn't about him. He, like millions of others, have been given a purpose and an assignment. The problem he has, Kevin, that is, he took his own seriously. And he saw it for what it is. And he didn't make it about him. And he said to himself, like God would have made it clear to him, don't you ever beg nobody for, you go and you preach my word. You don't ever put no demand or no honorarium. You don't ever do that. They will give you because I inspired them to give you. Why? Because I recognize he is divine. I am the branch. And if I abide in him, like he said, in him and me, I'm not just going to produce fruit. According to his rules, I am going to produce much fruit. In other words, he says, Kevin, you're going to watch Proverbs 14 and 23 come alive in your life. He said, with all labor, there is profit. And profit means that you are going to get an increase from what you're doing, meaning that your initial investment, okay, your profit will exceed, that's the rules, exceed your initial investment. And that's why these ministers and stuff who, who, seek me for counsel. I, this is what I tell them in counseling all the time. Don't be like these pastors today. Don't focus on no money. Don't focus on popularity. Don't make sure, make sure your commitment is to the word of God. Beg and ask God, Father, make clear to me what my, what my part is in this. What, what am I supposed to be doing in the, in the vineyard? What, what are my, what are my callings? Help. See, because when you focus on that, every, God have to put things in place to sustain you. Cause he said it in his word, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first my kingdom and righteousness, meaning the way that I do things in this kingdom, and all these things shall be added unto you. In other words, the things that you were once running behind, guess what? They will not run after you. He didn't end there. Uh, uh, Psalms 84, 11b. He says, listen, Kevin, listen to the rules now. He says, no good thing, Kevin, shall be withheld from you. Anything that is beneficial to you, to your ministry, to your family, in every area of your life, he says, Kevin, nothing shall be, the devil can't keep nothing from you. Watch the rules. Watch the catch. If you walk uprightly, what is walking uprightly? If I abide in him. In who? If I do what the word of God tells me to do and I'm consistent at it. I try to help you. I try to help you. Watch this now. Verse 6. He going deeper. Verse 6 of John 15. If a man abide not in me. Mm -hmm. So this is where Jesus I can know them by their fruit. You've been preaching for 500 years. You've been the pastor of this church for 6 trillion years. Broke. Nothing happened for you. 
can't keep two members losing everything. Nobody being healed, nobody being delivered. The only exercise where sometimes you could get something is when you beg them to give, beg them to sow a seed, threaten them that if they don't pay tithe, they will be cursed. Let me see what category you fall under. If a man abide, remain, or stay not in me, he is cast. We use this word here in the Bahamas, fling. <laughs> he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. The word withered means to dry up. Because why? What the branch was attached to that sustained the branch, it isn't attached to it anymore. So the life that sustained it is gone. He says, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them in the fire and they are burned. Verse 7. However, if ye abide in me, if you remain, if you stay steadfast in me and my words, watch this now, and my words abide in you. Watch what he says. And my words abide in you. You shall do who? I didn't hear that. You shall do what? What shall you do? Read it. He says, if you follow this rule, Kevin, this is how serious he is. He says, Kevin, if you follow these rules, whatever you ask, Kevin, there will be no limitations. Now, I know some people, well, well, what if I ask him for the space shuttle? No, see, because if you tune in with the word of God, then you will ask according to his will. If you truly committed to his word, you're going to ask according to his will. Uh, I think it's First John 4, verses uh, 14 to 15, I believe it is. And it says, if we ask anything according to his will, we could guarantee, we know that he hears us. And if we know and believe that he hear us, we also know we will be granted whatever it is that we're asking of him. Verse 7, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. All these years you had church. All these years you were shatatata. Ratatata, all these years, each year you vie to see how high you could flip to hit the chandelier and calling it spiritual. All these years, all these gymnastic skills, all these years you've been fasting, you know, you laugh at me, you say, Kevin, you got a little belly going on there, but look how skinny I am. Okay, that's fine. I ain't rather mad with you. In fact, I'm happy for you. You did all of that. But you never abide. But yet you're shocked because you place so much effort in roto, toto, shiti, la, la, la. You place so much effort in your gymnastic skills. And now it has produced a tremendous harvest of hardship, of difficulty, of all of this stuff. And you're shocked that this happened. Let me stay with God. Let me give you some more scripture. All these scriptures are on consistency. We're going to go quickly now. Hebrews 10, verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, listen to this, verse 23. And what does it say? Hebrews 10, verse 23 says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. What does that mean? Without doubting. I am consistent in what I believe, even though I don't see it as yet. Even though it has not manifested. But I understand the rules now based on what Kevin said. Just keep being consistent. Keep being consistent because the rule demands and commands a profit from what I'm doing. according to. Proverbs 14, 23. Okay? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for, for he, which is God, is faithful to his promise. Meaning that the promise coming. And the promise is the prophet. 
He say, keep, and that's P-R-O-F-I-T, keep doing it. Kevin, do, uh, Kevin, sometimes I know it's frustrating. Kevin, sometimes I know when you look and you look at your counterparts and you see them going ahead, Kevin, be clear. That's their season. That's their time. Don't get hooked up there. Don't let the spirit of competition come on you. Don't let that spirit of competitive come. Keep going forward. Keep going. And when you get discouraged, grab the bread of life, my word. We read it and ask me to give you endurance. Because if you keep at this, there's a profit at the end of this. Let's go here now to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Listen to what it says. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Sound like consistency to me. Always abounding in the work of the Lord the work of the Lord, the labor of the Lord, because all labor will give a profit. P-R-O-F-I-T. In other words, all labor will give an increase. So you ain't got to worry at the end of this teaching right here. You can hear Kevin say, if you want to tap into this word, this is a strategical time to sow your seed and watch God. Lies. Lies. Pure lies. What is God looking for? Seed? No. Is he looking for olive oils? No. Is he looking for shofars? No. What is he looking for, Kay? consistency in his word. I'm trying to help you. First Corinthians 15, verse 15, Therefore, my beloved, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, remain like your, your foundation. Ain't nobody moving me. I ten toes down. I don't care what you tell me. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what your title is. I stick into this. How you can stick to that boy? Look at you. You losing everything. What's wrong with you? That's okay. There was a promise attached to this according to the original rules. He has come true for me many times. Why should I doubt him this time? Get out of here, you devil. You came to discourage me, you demon. Get. Get out of here. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that the that your who, that your what? Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In other words, your labor will not uh, produce fruitlessness. This can produce something. I love it. I love it. Consistency. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 10, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 10. Uh-huh. And verse 9, what does it say? He that walketh uprightly, consistently. That's what he means. You don't just do a good deed today at 1 o'clock and the rest of the day you do an evil. No. He that walketh uprightly, meaning that I am consistent in what uprightly requires. And what it requires is me adhering to the laws of God. So it shows consistency. It says, he that walketh uprightly, Walk it surely, steadfastly, unmovable. Send your voodoo, send your witchcraft, call all of your witches, your warlocks, get your coven to come together, do what you want to do according to the rules. If I am walking uprightly, if I am committed to doing it God's way, I ain't compromising, I ain't telling no lie. And even if I do those things, Father, I repent. You have a clause in your law according to 1 John 1 and 9. Because you knew I would have messed up, you put this clause there. If I confess my sins, you, O Lord, are faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. So you know what God says now? A just man, watch it, fall it seven times. And guess what God do? God is reaching his hand. Come, get, get, get up, Kevin. Let's go. Let's go. Keep going. Keep going. God, I tie it. God, I see no promises. God, I lose everything. Kevin, keep going. Keep going. Keep believing me. Don't let your mind go on what you got and what you ain't got. Like my servant, the Apostle Paul, Kevin, you must be contented in wherever state you find yourself in. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your eyes on the vine. Remember, you are the branch. 
and you are being sustained to this point. It is the grace of God, Kevin, that has sustained you thus far, even though you haven't engaged the promises as yet. I love it. I love scripture. I love the word of God. I love it because I feel it coming alive right now because I live it and I'm living it. Try that, man. He that walk it uprightly, walk it surely, confidently. But he that provided his way, unstable, wavering, always doubting, always doing what they ain't supposed to be doing. What happened? He, he that, but he that perverted his way shall be known. Remember I told you about the guy when he first meets you? It's the best thing since life spread. Decent, respectful, mannerly. But the Bible says, after a while, okay, those that walk it in a perverted way, he shall be known or his character, like I said earlier, will expose him. Excuse me. Yeah, that's what the scripture says. Let's look at another one. I love scripture. I love it. Let's go to John. Let's go to John 14, verse 15. John 14, verse 15. I love this. Jesus speaking. John 14, verse 15 says, if, if, if it's a conjunction, and the word if mean that if becomes like a hinge. You ever see a hinge on a door? So depending on how this door hinge, this door swings, Okay, it's always gonna it's either gonna be based on the 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 force from the one side of the door or the force from the other side. So he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Meaning that remember I told you about the love thing before. If the guy says, Listen, Mary, I'm in love with you. I, I want from the time I met you in fifth grade, I was in love with you. Okay. We are in our 30s now. I'm, I'm in love with you then just as much as I'm in love with you now. I will do anything for you. However, remember, you will know them by their fruit. So what you're going to do now is you're not listening to what they're saying anymore. That's all beautiful. And I'm flattered. In fact, the book of Proverbs can tell you to beware of those who are always flattering you because there's a lot of deceit under that. But what he's saying now is now watch the action because what you're doing here, this now becomes the rules that I'm going to follow so I can make the right decision. Let me see if the action of this person matches the words of this person. I don't need to be Holy Ghost filled. I don't need to have been saved 30 years. None of that. I like it as follow the simple rule. I, I, You may like them too. Okay. You may feel attracted to them also, but, but hold off a minute on those feelings. And let's just do this litmus test. Okay. They're giving all of these verbs and adjectives in terms of their love towards you. Okay, fine. And that's beautiful. Now let's see. Let's see now if it's consistent with their behavior. Because if it's not, yeah, you say you love me. And I'm very touched by that, but I'm not interested in you. I'm not interested. Don't call my number no more and flock. In fact, I'm about to block you when I finish the last piece of the sentence with you right now. Okay? Right. But you may, you may, you might really, really like them for true, and you might think you're even making a wrong decision. And friends may even come there and say, boy, I know if you want to do that. You know, you know they're the CEO at uh, around the corner company, right? Okay, and what does that mean? What do you mean? That's a provider. You, you finally find someone who could provide for you. But 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 that what does that have to do with my happiness in the future? So they have equated happiness to friend that is to provisions. But they will never equate happiness that we could be broke together. But because we're in this together, we're contented and happy. Again, by their fruit you will know them. So not only do you know this clown over here whose words doesn't match their action, your friend over here who claims to be your friend, life to them is what they could get out of life materially because the, the happiness for them hinges on the materialistic stuff of life. While they would not have come out verbatim and say it, based on the rules, out of the abundance of the heart, their mouth been speaking. So that's two people you got to block now, <laughs> okay? That's two people you got to put a block on. I'm trying to help you, okay? So watch this now. He says, if you love me, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you are truly in love with me, you will be consistent in doing what I told you to do. If you, if you, all who say they love Jesus, you ain't got to tell me that. I could sit back based on these rules. I could sit back based on these rules and make my assessment. You call it judging. I call it scripture. I'm not judging you. 
I'm not judging you. I see judging is when I'm making a, an assessment with no facts, no proof, no nothing. The Bible says here, if you truly, Jesus, if you truly love me, listen, listen, the evidence of that, the proof of it, you will keep my commandments. I have an opportunity to go lie, steal, cheat, fornicate, but no, I love Jesus. Why? Because lying, cheating, and fornicating is breaking his commandments, and I don't want to do that. Wow, you truly love him now. Wow. And even though you could get away with this, nobody would have seen you. That's right, but he sees me. Wow. You see that? You see that, right? Watch this. So let's go now quickly here. We can wrap up right here. Let's go here now. Let's go here now to enemies. We're going to look at the enemies. Enemies, and we can wrap up right here. Enemies of consistency. Enemies. And what is the number one <laughs> enemy of consistency? And of course, this will be as a result of not being grounded and whatever it is that you claim to believe or trust it. So the first enemy, I want you to write this down, the first enemy of, of uh, being inconsistent or not consistent is uncontrollable emotions. Uncontrollable emotions. You see, because uncontrollable emotions provide the excuse now as to why you were not consistent, which is all lies. Okay? But what uncontrollable emotions Emotions do show, though, the flip side. It shows what you were consistent at. Let me give you an example. Again, you met a guy, very nice to you, very mannerly, seemingly very respectful, right? Then one day, you said something that he didn't like. He started to curse at you, point his finger in his face, and break a table or, sorry, break a plate or a glass, rage and anger. And then he says, after he calms down, I'm sorry. Well, the enemy here is, he claims to have been, sorry, what he was displaying to you, he was trying to give you the impression that is who he is. But clearly, that's not true because he could not be consistent in doing that. However, his behavior shows what he is consistent at. He is consistent at not having control. When he's not in control, now you begin to see the real him. If he was truly a humble person, there was nothing you could have said or done to produce such behavior in him. Again, let me reiterate this. Don't put focus on what they say. Put the emphasis on what they do. And what we're seeking is a correlation, a consistency. I need to see that what you are saying is consistent in what you do. In fact, you don't have to tell me who and what you were about. We could sit at this table and just eat and don't talk. All I want to do is watch you. Because in watching you, on, a, on whenever I do see you, and I'm watching you consistently, I could tell you who you are. You don't have to tell me. Because again, your beliefs, your, 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 your foundation of who you are is on an ongoing basis manifesting itself in what we call character. I'm trying to help you. I hope you're taking these things down. Getting some good gems today. You am going to tell me a word. When uh, my daughters start to date and so on, and they bring their boyfriends or their uh, intended mates to me, listen, he could come here all he want. He come, you roll up on the wrong brother over here, the wrong Negro, he come aboard. If he think he can come here and razzle and dazzle me and, and oh, Mr. Ewing, uh, uh, let me cut the grass for you. No, you can cut that grass, right? I need that cut because I don't want to pay for it. So yes, you cut it. And I want him to exhaust all of his services right here because I didn't see through him long time. Now that you didn't cut my grass, make sure you trim it up. Don't come here with that lawn more. Bring an edge up. I need you to come around that same coconut tree right there. Cut, cut it on the side right there. Yeah. I need you to cut that right there, okay? <laughs> yeah. Seeing that you want to be Mr. Nice Guy. Seeing that you want to impress me, but I can help you impress me, right? Now, when you don't cut that grass, Clearly, my car is dirty in a good future son-in-law, all right? Should have bought his armor all here, okay? Okay? And all this other stuff. And I need you to clean that car off because in, at, the, at the end of this exercise, because I know you're a fraud, a phony, and a fink, I can tell you don't ever come to my house no more, okay? But before you leave, I need you to put your services on display. <laughs> yes, I need your services on display, right? Okay? So he didn't realize I already... Let the arrow to my tires because I already planned for him to change them when he come there too. Yeah, you are a good future son-in-law. Let me see how patient you are. 
Uh, let me see the real you. See, because all I need to do is give a trigger, and the trigger normally comes through anger. So once I do something that frustrates you, I can see the real. Let me sit back. Let me sit back and see if you are as humble as you claim to be or you display to be. Let me see. Let me see if those, those obscene language can pop out of your mouth. Let's see. Let me, let me, and let me show my daughter what she's getting involved with. A fake fraud and a phony, a fink. Did you try that. <laughs> so number one, the enemies of, of being consistent is uncontrollable emotions. Okay, you get to see a lot there. Number two, the enemy of being inconsistent, procrastination. Procrastination number two. They're always procrastinating. I, I, they have, there's no consistency in them. They always look for a moment to rest, to lay down, to sleep. To, oh, I got to take a break. Oh, Lord, I work so hard. Yeah. The Bible says in all labor, there's a profit. Right? And this is why procrastination, being lackadaisical and so on, is a problem. Why? Because this is labor. Believe it or not. Every time there's work, you're going to go sleep. So what is the profit in this? Well, let's go back to the rules. There are two scriptures in the book of Proverbs, okay, that says the same thing. Listen to what it says. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come like an armed bandit. So the Bible says that this person who's constantly taking breaks, procrastinating, never doing what they're supposed to, meaning that there's no consistency, then what they're doing for themselves and if they're connected to someone is that they're rolling out the carpet of the future for poverty, for lack. Why? Because they refuse to be consistent in what they should be doing. Okay? The second, the second enemy to being consistent is a lack of focus. Anything could distract them. Why? Because they don't have that solid foundation. Anyone could come along right now. Right now. Let me give you an example. I remember I was sharing with my daughter uh, about two months ago. We were having a conversation. And I was saying to her, I said, Key, if you claim to have a friend, a good friend, and one you believe and trust in, nobody should be able to come to you and tell you something about that friend where you can make a decision right there and then to cut all ties with your friend without even discussing what you were told. Because the reality is you were never a friend. See, a true friend, the, the primary component of a true friend is the consistency of why you call them a friend. And for the most part, that would be their loyalty. But the truth is you are proving you're not loyal if some, if, if someone, if you and I are friends and someone could come to me and say, Kevin, watch out for John. He's a liar. And I make up right there. I ain't talking to him no more. I'm glad you told me that. I cut him off right now. Was I a friend of John? No. Because of this, my friend, and the reason they were my friend, because they met the qualifier that I was able to trust them. I need to meet with John and not in an attitude way. I need to sit with him normally, like, because we're friends. That's the respect and the benefits of friendship. And I need to discuss with you what I have heard. And to see if this is true, true your admission. And even if you lie to me, and I'll be watching your action, but I'm not just going to cut you off. Because it shows no stability. It shows that you, you who claim that this is not your friend, you were never a friend if you were just quick to cut them off. And this is what I was sharing with her. No one should be able to come to you and cause you to turn against your parents, turn against your friend because of what they said. There's no proof. Or even if they brought some kind of proof, you've not verified, you know none of that. So the truth is the quality of that friendship isn't so much more on what you heard this person do, but it's what you do when you heard what you were told that they did. So a lack of focus is the third one. People cannot be consistent if they're not focused. You can't. You cannot say you love this lady but yet you got two other ladies you're talking to. You're not focused. You cannot say you will give your all for this man and he's such a loving man and I, and I love him so much. But yet, whenever he's not around, you're talking to your ex-boyfriend. If it was innocent what you were doing, why you have to hide in what you're doing whenever your, your, your significant other isn't around? So you cannot be consistent if you're not focused. 
All right? The fourth one, you're easily influenced. Ease, and, and all of these are showing that you have no foundation. Every last one of these rules, the bottom line is you have no stern foundation. Okay? You're easily, anyone could come to you. Anyone could convince you. Think about it. You're with a man who takes care of you. This guy pays all the bills. He isn't bragging about it. He just, this is his love. He feels, this is what I want to do because I want to make her happy because I love her. You know, I love, I'm comfortable with her. I love sharing my life with her. This is who I want. I don't want nobody else. Okay? This person loves making love to you. They don't want to be with, they are handsome, nice. They could be with anybody. Many sharks and wolves and crocodiles behind them. But they don't want, the only person in all their life of having intercourse with anyone, this one who they married, this is the one I want. I don't want nobody else. I don't care who come on to me, who want to rap to me, who want to DM me. Forget you. This is what I want. So this person has reserved themselves to you. However, you are so easily influenced that you cannot be consistent in being sexually faithful to them. The first person whisper in your ear, you are willing to become intimate, exchange fluids with this person who does none of what this one is doing for you. But forget the material things that this person is doing for you. Look at their heart. And you're willing through, you're so sexy. Mm -mm, you look so good. And you're willing to undress yourself. You're willing to let this guy be a part of you sexually. Easily influenced. It is the fourth enemy of consistency. I hope you listen to me. I hope you listen to me. Number five. And this is the final one. There are much more. Number five. And I, I left this for number five because it is the basis of everything we've said so far in terms of the, the four that I gave you. Number five is a lack of a firm foundation. If you don't have a firm foundation, I told you guys that in my latter years, my, my parents, my mother and my father, even though I was born in the Bahamas, my parents are from the Texas and Caicos. They migrated here. My mom stayed here, but my father went back. And of course, I, when I was younger, I was sent to live with both my grandparents separately. I lived with my uh, maternal grandparent, and she went to the Prophecy Church, Christian woman, and I, I stayed in church. When I left her, I was with her for about a year or two, and then I went to live with my paternal grandmother, my father's mother, grandmother, and she was a Methodist. But in all of this, unknowing to them or even me, a foundation is being set here. Because living with them on the islands, in the Turks and Kickers, you every time that church is open, you and they're whether you like it or not. And the day they catch you frowning your face, two black eyes right there. Lay you right out right there. Okay? And back then, discipline was such a high thing that let's say you did something and the neighbor saw you, the neighbor had the right to correct you to the extent of laying out some lashes on you, which you, some of you are called spanking or beating, whatever. But that was normal. And, and you had a generation of disciplined people as a result of that. Again, they're following the rules. If you spare the rod, if you spare the rod, you, if you spare the rod, you'll spoil the child. So they understood some rules. So well, anyway, it was through that firm foundation of watching both my grandmother's parade Whenever trouble came, they would get on their knees, and I would see this. Then I saw it in my mother. I saw her pray. I would hear her pray. So all of this is becoming a foundation. Now let's look at the rules now, why foundation is key. Another scripture, Proverbs 22, verse 6. Listen to what it says. Train a child, train this child in the way in which it should go. And when this child gets older, they will never depart from it. In other words, here's what it's saying. Set up a foundation for this child while they are young. And when they get older, no matter what goes on in their life, they're going to resort or retreat to the same foundation. So let me put it another way. I, who, was, grew, up in a Christian, who grew up in a Christian home under both sides of my, my parents, what that did for me, and I didn't even realize while I was doing it, every time I got in trouble, every time my back was against the wall, what was the first thing that came to my mind? The foundation. Kevin, go pray. Pray about this. 
whether there was monies that I needed, whether it was a relationship that went, but whatever went wrong or even right, I would go to that. A person who grew up in a house of uh, sorcery, every time they have a problem, if they like somebody and this person don't like them or this person with someone, but they want them. So what do you do? You're going to go to the to, to pray and ask Jesus to fix it? No. You're going to do what you were trained to do. What, and training don't necessarily mean you were sat down and taught these things. As children, most of your training comes through observation, which you visually observe. I, I saw mommy cheating on daddy. They didn't know I saw them. And you saw that foundation, you grew up doing the same thing. So a foundation could be intentionally set or be set in someone and the one who's responsible for setting the foundation don't even realize it. So for me, and that's why I'm so stern in what I believe because this is foundational for me. So nobody, and many have tried to come and give me a different version of what the Bible say here and what it means here and what it does there. And that does not mean, let me be clear, that I'm closed-minded. That does not mean that I don't, I believe in revelation. I believe in that 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 something I could have read or taught to me a certain way all my life, and a revelation comes and says, no, 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 I believe in that. But if you're pulling me away from the Bible, talking Spanish now. So the fifth one here is a lack of a firm foundation. It's an enemy to consistency. You're wavering to and fro, okay? So with that said, let's use our last scripture here to now make sense of what I just said in those five enemies of consistency. So let's go now to our final scripture, which is James, which is James chapter one, right? James chapter one, okay? And we're going to read from verse five to verse eight, okay? James chapter one, verse five says, if any of you lack wisdom, mm -hmm, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally or freely or generously and abrade it not and he shall and it shall be given unto him. So God, if you ask for it, he's going to give it to you. Verse 6 of James chapter 1. But let him, meaning the one who asks for this wisdom, let him ask in faith. Meaning that I can ask for wisdom right now. I must believe I have it right now. That's what faith is. Because God said it in his word, I believe I have it. I don't need a sign for it. I don't need to hear a big bang in the skies or lightning or volcanoes erupting. I believe, just like when you got saved, by faith, meaning that I, Jesus says, if I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart, I am saved. I don't need no proof of it. That's what I believe. So he says, verse 6, but let him, the one who's asking for wisdom, ask in faith, not wavering, not doubting. In other words, be consistent that you have it. Be consistent in your belief. So James is saying here again, and all through the Bible, you're going to see this consistency in everything, if you want success or even non-success. So consistency will produce failure. Consistency will produce life, death, advancement, demotion. Consistency will produce paranoia, sickness, disease. It's all hinges on consist. Whatever the rules are, just be consistent at it and you will get it, whether you want it or not. All the rules are waiting on is someone who is going to be consistent at this. You are a complete loser in life because you are consistent at whatever you're doing to be a loser, whether you are aware of it or not. Cons the law of consistency isn't hoping that the one who is consistent acknowledges what they're consistent at. The only thing the law or the mystery of consistency require is that you are consistent at whatever it is that you're doing because it's going to produce a harvest. It's going to produce profit. So watch this. For 6 of James 1, but let him ask in faith, not wavering, not being inconsistent, for he that wavered or he that doubts is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. So he says, every time you're inconsistent, meaning when you doubt, it's just like you ever see a boat on, a, on the high seas when weather is rough. There's no consistency. They're up and down all over the place. There's no consistency. 
So he says, whenever you waver, doubt, or you allow fear or distraction to come, the purpose of all of those things is to derail you from being consistent. Watch this. So he goes on to say, yeah, okay, in verse uh, very six, but let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that waver is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and, wind and toss. Verse seven, for let not that man, who man? The one who asks in faith. Uh, all asking in faith means that I ask according to the word of God and I believe it. I don't need to see the evidence of it. I believe I have it. So when I pray for, for, for example, when I'm praying, normally at the end of my teachings, I'll say, Lord, I pray for the people watching me and listening to me now and even in the future that you download the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. I believe that. So what would I do next? I say, now, Lord, I join my faith, my belief, which is the word of God and the promises that is attached to it. I join my faith with your faith, those who believe also. Because what am I doing? Wherever two or three touching anything on this earth shall ask the Father in my name, they shall have. So what I'm praying and what I'm doing, I'm just not doing because this is what you do. I'm not doing this to impress you. Everything I do with you, I'm following rules. You may not be aware of it, but I'm following rules to produce a certain fruit. So that's why I would say, and Father, for everyone that's listening and watching, that believe, that's what I say, I join my faith with this. I don't have to be there with you. I don't have to physically hold your hand. The only thing we need in the spiritual realm is your faith. We're not connected. Now, the second part has to come to pass, and it has nothing to do with us no more. And that is the fruit that we are seeking. Again, the more you appreciate the laws, the rules, and the principles, the more you're going to appreciate your Bible, the more you're going to want to read it. Because you realize this ain't just stories no more. These things actually happen, right? So he says, verse 7 of James 1, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Why? And he gives the reason why in verse 8. A double-minded man. In other words, a man who's not consistent in his thoughts. The same man who's not consistent in his thoughts will not be consistent in his behavior. Let's go back to my example. He said he loved you. He said he loved the dirt you walk on. He said you're the best thing since sliced bread. He said that he loved you more than hog loves slop. That's what he said. However, he is not producing. He is not demonstrating. He is not manifesting. All of those beautiful words he said to you. There's an inconsistency here. So verse 8 says, a double-minded man, always second-guessing, which now is producing inconsistency. A double-minded man is, listen, is, listen, is unstable in all his ways. He's like that sea craft on the ocean at bad weather. So listen to what the Bible is saying. This guy here, who was not consistent, who was double-minded concerning the love that he has for you, the Bible says then expect an inconsistency in his behavior. And how is that? He cheats on you. He lies to you. He's very selfish. He's very deceiving, manipulative, conniving, narcissist. Same guy who told you when he first met you, he will do anything for you. He's finally met a soulmate. I love you so much. I will do anything for you. Sounds good. But your behavior is now bringing the scriptures alive. You are double-minded. And according to the rules of double-mindedness, which is inconsistency, you are not double-minded in some things, but you are double-minded or inconsistent in everything that you do. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for such a powerful message, such a powerful teaching. Father, I personally am grateful, and I'm grateful for those who of you had online here, who are watching this now, and will watch it in the future. I know and I believe deeper in my spirit that you have literally touched many minds, remove blindness, break scales and stuff from their understanding, and now they're able to navigate a little bit easier through life because of this vital information. I believe this because your word declares in Proverbs 11 verse 9b, and it says that through knowledge, which we have given today, through knowledge shall the just be delivered, shall the just see changes in their lives if they apply this knowledge. The same word uh, in the book of James, the same book, the same scripture in the book of James says that 
We must not just be hearers of this word, clapping and saying, preach Kevin, hallelujah, man, you're a good teacher. I love listening to Kevin. No, I'm not satisfied there. Yeah? I'm not impressed there. Yeah? The word of God says, be not just hearers of the word, but if you really want to impress me, be doers of it also. Do exactly what you've learned today. Put into action, make it applicable. Why? Because making what you would have heard applicable is labor. And be consistent in that labor. Why? Because Proverbs 14 verse 23 says, in all labor, not some, in all labor, no matter how you're laboring, there is profit. There is an increase. There is an overflow from the original investment. So, Father, help us to be consistent. Help us to be consistent in being who? Doers of the knowledge that's supposed to deliver us, that's supposed to set us free. Help us, Lord, to break the tradition of shandolo, la, 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 la. Yes, we believe in speaking in tongues. Yes, we believe in signs and wonders. What we don't believe in is the pageantry of that. What we believe is that if we follow the laws, if we follow the rules and be consistent, we don't have to say shandolo la la la. We don't have to spin around because just like when a seed is put in the ground with the right soil or the right foundation, we don't have to prophesy a mango tree to come. We don't have to prophesy an apple tree. We don't have to prophesy a pineapple tree. If we place the pineapple seed in the ground and put the work in, in terms of in the right soil and watering it, by default, it will produce the fruit of mango eventually. So, Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we praise you. And we ask these things in the matchless and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So, folks, that is it for me. I am done. Now, hopefully, it is my intent to come back to you tonight to uh, pick up on the continuation of the unspoken laws of tithing. It is my intent. Trust me. It is my true intent. Okay? But I may be inconsistent there. <laughs> no, but seriously, I've got some stuff to do. And depending on how I finish up there, because I want to come back tonight to continue with that teaching we started on, uh, on Sunday. Okay? So God bless you. Continue to pray for me as I pray for you. And you have a wonderful, wonderful evening.